Hello, I'm Marlene Vital, the Development Director at St. Sebastian Parish. And with me today, I have Ed Dunkley. Hello, Ed. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Tell, tell us what your official role is at St. Sebastian Parish. Well, officially, I am the part-time Minister for Human Concerns and Adult Formation. Okay. All right. So, so that 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 means that uh, I serve as a liaison and a link to the varied human concerns ministries in the parish, and that I also work with the the varied adult formation ministries that we we have. Also, uh, also that ministry moves between both Sebastian's and St. Catherine's. So I, I minister at both parishes. So, and how long have you been doing this with um, St. Sebastian as well as St. Catherine? I know that they merged a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And how did, you, how did you actually get started in this work? Huh. I've been at St. Sebastian's for seven years. Okay, this is my seventh year, and this is my final year, because okay, oh, okay. I am I am retiring. Uh, and two years ago, I, I moved from full time to to part time, um, and so that was a wonderful thing. I have been doing this for forty three years in the Milwaukee Archdiocese. Wow. <laughs> okay. And the first couple of years, I actually did this at a parish at St. Peter and Paul's on the east side while I was teaching. So I taught at UWM for a year, and I taught at St. Peter and Paul's grade school for nine years. So I was busy. Yes, it prepared you well for all of this. <laughs> so, yes, uh, so, so I am primarily, my, my, my first uh, vocation was a teacher, but I really got started because I spent nine years in a seminary for a missionary religious order, and I decided that um, I was not being called to priesthood, and God wanted me somewhere else. And so this is where I ended up. So in all of that work, nothing would have prepared you for doing your ministry during a pandemic. <laughs> So where do you find your strength for carrying out your ministry during this more worrisome time? Well, first, my family. Uh, my wife is 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 a constant blessing to me. Uh, we are we are wonderful companions. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that has been truly a, a blessing is that um, my siblings oh, and my son and his wife uh, we we don't FaceTime chat. We've done that a couple of times. But what we do do is we send each other every day a kind of a report of what we're doing and the kind of the struggles we're doing, going through. So like yesterday for me was a little depressing day. Uh, and so I, I just kind of aired a little bit of that. And uh, my brother Larry, who's a, a priest in New York, uh, just basically came back with, you know, hang in there, tomorrow will be better, and today is better. So it's, so those are two, so that has been a, a, an incredible blessing. How, what a nice thing to be doing. I, you know, that that's probably something everybody would like to be doing with all of their siblings, getting that um, little update and mm -hmm. trying to help one another as well. Yeah, and it's, it's also a, a good way because, it's one of those funny things. My, my father had been um, a, a, is a, was a surveyor and then moved into a construction company. Eventually, he became the owner of that company. And uh, when I was in my mid thirties, he had come out from New York to visit, and we were we were in a bar chatting, and we were talking, and he expressed his sadness that none of us had followed him into the business and that he was going to end up selling the business and that he couldn't pass it on to his children. And we, we, we talked about it in different ways, but one of the things I, I pointed out to him was that every one of his children had gone into a, a helping ministry. 
He had a son who's a priest, uh, myself. Uh, my brother is a special education teacher. Uh, two of my sisters are nurses. One has passed now, but the other one is working right now in one of the uh, COVID in, uh, hospitals in New York City. Uh, so, and he, and I said, you know what? It, it is just a wonderful testimony to to you and to mom that you raised us as as people as of faith who understand that our faith requires us to be of service to others. And he took that with, he said, you know what, you're right. And I am proud about that, but I'm still sad that nobody's following me into the business. So, so he might've thought that it would be a miracle for someone to change their path and follow them, follow him into the business. Right. Well, you know, I, I will also remind him that my sister, my youngest sister, my baby sister was actually very interested in following him into the business. And his response to that was, Ed, you worked for me for five years. You know what kind of job it was. You know the kind of people that we work with. It's not a place for a woman. For a woman, right. And it might not have been. So tell me about an experience in your life that you would consider a miracle. These are two kind of sad stories, but they come together wonderfully. Okay. Um, six years ago, um, my wife and I were down in Florida, which we do every year we go down and we were visiting with my parents who um, had a, a condo in the same unit that we have timeshare in. Uh, and we went out for dinner one of the last nights we were gonna be there and had a wonderful dinner. And I pulled out my wallet and paid for dinner. And afterwards, Laura, my wife, remarked that she said, you know, that's the first time that your dad didn't fight you for a bill. And I said, oh. yeah, that's right. A week later, my father collapsed and they brought him up to New York for, to, uh, to a hospital. Uh, I flew out there uh, and uh, he died. When he died, all of my brothers and sisters and my mom were there. I, he died with, I was holding his hand as he passed. Um, one of the remarkable things was, is that the, the doctors had told him years before that he really needed a heart transplant, that his heart was bad. And my sister shut off all of the monitor noises, but they went like that. He, he died and you, we could see on the monitor that he had gone. The only thing that kept going was his heart. His heart kept beating after everything else stopped for a good 10 minutes. And we all just looked and we said, that's dad, that's his stubbornness. He was gonna prove to those doctors that they were wrong. So his heart was the last thing that went. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was part one. Part two was uh, a year and a half ago, my sister Irene uh, had her final bout of cancer. Um, I was able to say goodbye to her the day we put her into hospice. Uh, a week later, she died. Uh, I flew back out to New York and uh, we, we worked on the, the arrangements and the funeral and everything else. And my mother really, really went very quickly. Um, to the point that on the day we buried Irene, my mom could not get out of bed. And uh, I told Laura, my wife, I said, I'm not leaving because this is the end for my mother. And um, so I, I was staying with my mom and it, there were some, so many funny things. The, uh, we, we arranged for a hospital bed to come in. And so we brought the bed in and she went ballistic. She was not going to have a hospital. And yeah. I explained to her. So I explained to her, I said, look, mom, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take your bed and we're going to move it over to the side of the room and we'll put the hospital bed in and we'll do it not so much for you, but for the nurses aides who are coming in because it's too hard for them to get you up and to move you and get you into the bathroom and things. And she's going, oh, okay, that's fine. So the next two nights I got to lay in her bed 
and I just stayed up with her all night because she would come in and out of sleep. Uh, we prayed together. I, I prayed the. Ro I'm not a big rosary prayer, except where I need to be. So I prayed the rosary with her. Uh, we had some incredible conversations, some of which were just absolutely hilarious because she was kind of like in and out of reality. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, I'm, I was there praying the rosary uh, with her and about two o'clock in the morning, I was watching her breathe and I could see her breath was getting more and more shallow and I continued praying and she stopped praying with me and I watched and she stopped breathing. I was holding her hand she stopped breathing. I held her hand for about five minutes and then I got up and I put the monitor on her and it she she had passed. Uh, and I had the incredible privilege of being with both my parents when they passed and holding their hands. Um, and I've been with, in, in this kind of ministry, in this work, uh, you know, I've visited, I've been with other people in hospice, I've been with other people when they've died. Uh, but it, it was just, for me, it was a miracle that I got to share their, my, my parents' death in such an intimate way. Wow. Um, That's beautiful. And what a fortunate experience, for sure. Yes, very much so. Um, you know, and it's it, it helps me because it's like, um, you know, it, it, it's, there's a wonderful, wonderful transition in people's lives when they stop saying, if I die, and they begin saying, when I die. And it's when you recognize that sense of more mortality uh, that you can really start living uh, uh, a productive, honest life. And... Uh, that, you know, that I had been doing that long before, but it, it was one more reinforcement. Mm -hmm. oh, no, that, those are lovely stories, and they truly are miracles, for sure. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. Um, so switching gears a little bit um, and going back to your ministry, um, there are many prayers, but then there are also songs, which are in my feeling oftentimes there are prayers in and of themselves is there a favorite song that you have about your faith or that you uh you go back to all the time as like yeah this is my center i love this song mm -hmm. um when my wife laura and i got married before we were married we spent a lot of time on our, on our wedding um and uh, both choosing the readings and uh, the music. And one of, the, one of the hymns that we chose was David Haas's Servant Song. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we did that because we said, you know what? This is our marriage motto, that we are going to be servants to each other and we are going to be servants to the community. And so that is, is my favorite piece because it, it for me, it sums up who and what I am. Mm -hmm. And so each time it gets uh, played or comes up in the the ro rotation at uh, church, you're taken back, aren't you? To Always, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's lovely. So during this whole quarantine, you've learned a lot about yourself um, mm -hmm. and maybe even gone back and played that song once or twice. Um, but what have you learned about how you have to navigate differently during the quarantine? Um, first of all, there, there's a need for much more patience. Uh, things are not going to happen as quickly. Um, I find actually I'm spending more time like on computer and doing things than I usually do. Like today, I, th I thought today was going to be a pretty easy day. And I've actually, I've spent, I think I've been off the computer for about three hours for the whole day. And that was Laura and I took a, an hour and a half walk. And then we sat out in the backyard and uh, had a little lunch. Uh, and then I just had a, a dinner with my family. So, uh, but I've been on a lot. I've, I did uh, two different webcasts uh, back and forth with um, Amy and, and Margaret and Faith Formation. We uh, doing plans for next year already. Uh, so that's there. 
uh, this morning, I, um, it, I've been working with a young woman who was preparing for confirmation, and she called me at 8 o'clock in the morning. She wanted to talk about something, so we spent an hour on the phone this morning, you know, talking about Eucharist and what it meant to her, and um, so, you know, that, that, that's that's there. I, um, I have a half a dozen, five, six families that are on hold for baptism, and I know that they're anxious to have their, their children baptized. Um, and I was hoping to give them good news today, and then I got notice that uh, we're going to continue to put sacraments on hold. So now I've got to contact each of them and, and tell them, well, it's not going to be in June, but you know, hopefully before the summer is over, we will have the opportunity to celebrate these baptisms. So right. patience is has never been one of my strong um, virtues. And I'm, I'm, it's, I'm being say, forced. True. <laughs> um, I know I found the same thing that I find I'm, I have to be very patient. But mm -hmm. what I also find is that I'm working probably more hours than when I went to the office to work. Yes, Part very much so. And it's not so much that I'm not disciplined about it. It's that you get involved, and so you just stay involved. Mm -hmm. And um, when they say go out and take a walk, I have a really hard time breaking away to, in fact, go take a 20-minute uh, walk or whatever. That's, that's discipline, and I'm good with that. I've gotten good at that. So I've got, I had, you know, I said to Laura, I said, we're going to go out about quarter afternoon, and because I have a conference uh, from 11 to noon. So a quarter afternoon, we were gone. Good for you. I think if the weather had been a little nicer, I love to bike ride. So uh, <laughs> I could probably discipline myself even better to break away for a bike ride. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be pretty much the same as today. So do we. So I'll do it. I'll have to do it. Put a windbreaker on and go. Yep, yeah, I've got all the right stuff for it. <laughs> so then to wrap things up, um, I just have one final question to tell me about if you've received any messages or emails from a parishioner during the quarantine that you found particularly impactful for yourself. Yeah, I was I was talking to to one of our seniors, one of the one of our church lady elders in the parish, and uh, she is a woman not only of great faith, but I was I was talking to her about I was talking about her with Father Peter Patrick the other day, and I said you know in forty plus years of of church ministry, she is the most remarkable natural theologian. I have ever encountered. Um, she doesn't have the the education or the language, but she has the the faith and the understanding to back up that faith. And uh, we were talking about something, and we, we she had mentioned a, 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 a concern that she had raised up, and we got back, and I started getting a little bit. Um, not not so much nasty, but a little critical about some 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 people. And her response was was just incredible. Her response was, you know, we we never ever know what people have suffered or have made a person what they are. And we really have to, if we 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 are followers of of Jesus, we have to love each person. And the people that we find the most hard to love are the ones that God wants us to love the most. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's beautiful, and it's a great reminder as well. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for taking some time to talk with us and um, share a little bit about yourself with the parishioners of St. Sebastian. Could I share one one last thing? Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but this goes in with my servant thing. So let's see if I can I'll hold this up. This is a painting 
by a German uh, artist. His name is Sigrid uh, Koder. And this is the, let's see if I can get this. I have a, I have the, a big one uh, in my office. But anyway, I'm going to bring this up so you can see this. It's the washing of the feet. Yes. And in the washing of the feet, the only way you see Jesus's face is in the water in the bowl. Excellent. I could see and, it. And that that is perfect because the only way that we should manifest ourselves to the world is in our service. Um, we shouldn't be looking to to be recognized for it. You know, we, we should basically try to to submerge ourselves in service, um, and then we don't get in the way. It becomes God's work. That's beautiful. Thank you. That You're was welcome. a wonderful Have way a to. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Okay.